Welcome to another video on interesting topics in quantum mechanics. Today we're talking about non-degenerate perturbation theory. Perturbation theory is typically treated by first looking at non-degenerate perturbation theory, then degenerate, and then time dependent, and we will follow in that order. Beginning with non-degenerate perturbation theory, which considers problems where there are no degenerate eigenstates in the unperturbed system. I'm going to cover this by example by beginning with what we did in homework number four. And for listeners who didn't see that, I'll review it briefly. We had a bound state problem, an infinite potential well. And just to make everybody's lives difficult, it was centered at the origin. You see, an infinite potential well is easiest to solve when one of the edges of the well is zero. That way, all of the eigenstates are sine waves. But in problem four, I put the zero of x at the center of the well and bounded at plus and minus a, and then asked what happens when there's a delta function potential placed right at the center of the well. So there's this disturbance right in the well, right at x equals zero. And your first challenge was get the eigenstates for the well without that, and then see what happens when you introduce the delta function. With the delta function positioned right at x equals zero, you have a different way to express the potential energy, where now we have to, instead of saying potential energy is zero between minus a and plus a, we have to say it's equal to the delta function between minus a and a. And then outside of x equals that range, it's infinity. In the case of a well that did not have this delta function in the center of it, the eigenenergies are just the eigenenergies of a particle in a box of width 2a. So be a little cautious about this 8 right here. It comes from the fact that the width is twice a. But when you introduce the delta function at x equals 0, you have to account for changes in the modes. All bound state systems have two types of stationary states, odd and even. Odd eigenstate and even eigenstate doesn't refer to the quantum number. Notice odd eigenstates have even quantum numbers. Odd and even refers to the symmetry of the wave function. The ground state of a plano particle on a box has a maximum at the center of the box, and so that's the n equals 1 state. Notice that is an even function, so it's an even eigenstate. The second resonance of the particle in a box is a complete sinusoid. It has to be 0 at x equals 0. It's your n equals 2. It's an odd function. So it's an odd eigenstate. When you did problem 4, you quickly concluded that the odd eigenstates are not affected by the delta function in the center because they have no amplitude in the center. But the even eigenstates have a maximum value at x equals 0. All of them do, n equals 1, 3, 5, 7. They all have a max value, negative or positive, at x equals 0. So they are affected by the delta function. But the odd eigenstates have no amplitude where the delta function is, so they don't respond to it at all. So we only had to figure out new expressions for the even eigenstates. And this is where I made your lives difficult by not putting x equals 0 at one of the edges. Then you concluded that the even eigenstates are these expressions where we had to force it to be a different expression in the negative territory and the positive territory. But we're not going to spend time trying to understand where this expression came from. There were some subtle considerations in coming up with it. Take this as a given. We have a system that has this eigenfunction for the even states, and it just has signs for the odd states. These wave numbers k result from a transcendental equation that you derived in problem 4. You found that solving this transcendental equation graphically leads to the allowed values of k, the wave number. Let's just take a minute and try to understand the meaning of this alpha. The strength of the delta function is the terminology that's usually applied to it. But still, what does that mean? Delta goes to infinity at x equals 0. So what does it mean to have strength? If I had a function. And let me sketch it as f of x is 0 up until the origin, say x equals 0. And then it's a step of height alpha. If I took the derivative of f with x, what do I have? Well, at x equals 0, you have a delta function times alpha. And so alpha is the height of a step function. 
then whose derivative is alpha delta of x. That's the kind of meaning of alpha, is that if you integrated this function, you'd have a step function of height alpha. So that was a review of problem four, which we're going to go back now and do using non-degenerate perturbation theory. We can do that because there are no degenerate states in a particle in a box system. So the first thing you'd normally do is to find the allowed eigenenergies in the perturbed system. And we already have the eigenenergies for the unperturbed state. Without the delta function present, these are the eigenstates for a particle in box centered at x equals 0 of width 2a. Take this as a given, as the starting point for the problem of find the energy eigenvalues of a particle in a box with a delta function in the center. Even values of n have a sign of x, which means that the wave function is 0 at x equals 0, so the wave function is 0 where the perturbation is. So states with an even value of n are not affected by the perturbation. We will have to focus our attention on these odd values of n, though, because their wave function has a maximum at x equals 0. So the notation used is e sub n superscript 1, meaning the nth eigenstate, and the 1 means to first order. So the first order correction to the nth eigenstate is found by integrating the perturbation Hamiltonian over the eigenstates. H prime, the perturbation Hamiltonian, is the delta function. Because without that, you just have the infinite potential well. This is what you add to the infinite potential well. And so you integrate the unperturbed eigenstates. So this will be applicable to all of the odd eigenstates. And when you set up that integral, you have a delta function inside, which makes it a very easy integral to solve. And it's just alpha over A is the correction to the unperturbed energy. So if you take the unperturbed energy, which was n squared, pi squared, h bar squared over 8ma squared, and just add that alpha over a to it, now you have the eigenenergies for the even eigenstates. Odd eigenvalues are even eigenstates. Remember, even refers to the symmetry of the wave function, not to the parity of n. Odd eigenstates are unaffected because the delta function is at a place where the wave function has no value. One other thing that can be done in perturbation theory is you can find the ground state with the perturbation correction to it. So let's expand the ground state. Psi sub n1 means the first order correction to the nth eigenstate. We're going to do the ground state. If you carry out the sum involving these matrix elements and the unperturbed wave functions and the unperturbed energy eigenvalues, you'll get the first order correction to the wave function. And it's very important to note when you do the sum that you skip m equals n. We skip the eigenvalue that equals the eigenvalue of interest because then you have an infinity. So the first order wave function begins with m equals 2 because we want to understand the n equals 1 state. This is the first term of the sum. We can integrate the second unperturbed state with the perturbation Hamiltonian and the first unperturbed state. Go on to the next element in the sum. We integrate the third unperturbed state with the first unperturbed state and the perturbation Hamiltonian. And those become the coefficients of expansion in the unperturbed states. If you keep evaluating these coefficients, you will find them getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And we will do the first three of them. Some of these matrix elements might be zero. So we're going to go actually way beyond the three that are shown here. Here's the first matrix element. It uses the n equals 2 state, the states that are to be taken as a given in the problem. When n equals 2, your eigenfunction is minus 1 to the 1 sine of pi over ax. And all of these integrals are very simple to solve because the function is a delta function. Sine of 0, cosine of 0, is the result of that integral because it's with a delta function. This is an integral. And that only has value when x equals 0, and that's why it's the product of sine of 0 and cosine of 0. If that one's 0, what's the next one? Putting in the third eigenstate, that was a cosine. Now you don't have a sine of 0 in your result. You're not going to have 0 for a result. It's always alpha over a for these. We're multiplying alpha times the square root of 1 over a squared. So alpha over a. And you get minus alpha over a.
What about the next one? Again, we're integrating sine with cosine and a delta function. You're going to have sine of zero times cosine of zero. Let's keep going until at least three of these are not zero. The fifth one, you're integrating cosine with a cosine and a delta function. So you will have a cosine of zero times a cosine of zero. That's not zero. And notice the difference in SIG and sine between the previous one that was not zero. Now it's positive. So we have an alternation of signs. The next one is going to be zero. And the next one is going to be, again, cosine delta times cosine. And it's minus one and alpha over A. I think we can stop with that. The pattern is very clear that these matrix elements are 0 minus alpha over a, 0 alpha over a, 0 minus alpha over a. I bet you can guess the next one is 0, and the one after that is plus alpha over a. The pattern is very clear, so let's write it this way, that the matrix elements are alpha over a, and I'll write minus 1 to the m minus 1 over 2 if m is odd, and 0 if m is even. Follow my advice here and pause the video and confirm that this exponent is how you would write it. Putting these matrix elements into the expansion then will give us the first order correction to the ground state eigenfunction. So we have to sum on all the odd values of m or summing on the even eigenstates. These are the matrix elements we decided we have. The denominator now needs to be worked on. It is the difference between the unperturbed ground state energy and the unperturbed m level energy. And then we have to put in the unperturbed wave function. So this is the first term in that expansion. We have the cosine, and that's minus 1 to the m minus 1 over 2. There's the energy difference, and there's square root of 1 over a, which also goes with the cosine. There's the alpha over a, which goes with the perturbation Hamiltonian. The next term has a different expression for e sub m0, the unperturbed Hamiltonian, but this is always the ground state there, and the next term, and so on. Perhaps you can see by inspection that the denominators are getting successively smaller. It's easier to see if we factor out some constants, so I'm going to write this in a simplified form by pulling out most of the stuff in the denominator and canceling everything I can, and I have the first order correction to the ground state wave function is this expansion on cosines. Looking at the cosine terms, the first term in the expansion is cosine. The second term in the expansion is one-third cosine. The next term is one-sixth cosine. You can check for yourself. The next term is one-tenth cosine. Now, this is the perturbation correction to the wave function, meaning it's already small. The largest term in that correction is cosine. The largest term that's not shown is one-tenth that size. So we will disregard any term that's one-tenth as large as our perturbation correction. So we will disregard every term beyond the ones that are shown here. This is the perturbation correction to the wave function. Add it to the unperturbed wave function to get the new expression for the wave function. And it's only ground state. The ground state wave function is root 1 over a cosine pi over 2ax add what's in the red box to this expression down here and you have the ground state wave function with the delta function perturbation in place. The next consideration is what happens if there are degeneracies present because then you risk having a singularity when that denominator goes to zero and so we have a different approach to take to the expansion for cases where degeneracies are present and that's what's next.